Welcome to part two of the tutorial for doing a fluid flow simulation of an air intake system with a filter. In part one, we set up this simulation and now we're ready to solve and visualize results. So to solve, simply click the green button over here. Now I want to remind you that we are running this simulation in refined mode. You can see that at the bottom of your screen. In refined mode, we are using our tried and tested Fluent Solver, which utilizes your computer's CPU and RAM to perform the calculation. I want to point out that the Simulation Information Display, or SID, which you can see at the bottom of your screen, displays a lot of information to give you an update on what's going on. The green line indicates the progress of the simulation. And when that green line is about halfway around, this indicates that the mesh has been automatically generated. If you want, you can click this icon to visualize what that mesh looks like. You can see that we have used our intelligent meshing techniques to automatically create a mesh, which includes refinement in areas of curvature. Uh, it includes boundary layer refinement near the walls of the boundary. And if you click this icon, you can also look at a cross section and you can grab and drag this around as you see fit. You can also click on this plane to expose the triad, and you can use that triad to move things around in any way that you uh, feel is appropriate. For example, if you click, double click on one of these curved arrows, it snaps that cross section by 90 degrees. Uh, you can hit escape two times to dismiss the heads up display uh, for that move tool, okay? Now let's click on the triad here to orient the view normal to that cross section. And you'll see what that fidelity adjustment did for you. You can see that the mesh uh, at the interfaces between the blue and pink bodies are all roughly the same size, which is a best practice in simulation. Okay, while we were talking, the solve was uh, loaded up. And you can see that the convergence plot shows the progression of the simulation, okay? You'll also notice that you start getting a preview of the results as the solution is running. By default, we're displaying streamlines and you can control the streamlines um, visual effects by hovering over this icon. So let's say we want to increase the number of streamlines, make them thicker, it's really nice to be able to interact with the results as the simulation is progressing, okay? You can click and drag the circle to make the release of all the streamlines to fit within the inlet, you know, makes it look a little bit cooler. And you can kind of see what's happening to the solution as it progresses. Now, I just want to make sure you understand this is not a transient simulation. This is a steady state simulation as indicated by this symbol here down at the SID. Um, it just looks transient because it's updating the results as the iterations progress. Okay, uh, we can also look at different types of uh, results while the solution is progressing. So let's turn off the streamlines by clicking here. And then let's click here to look at velocity. Okay, so you can see this is kind of a 3D rendering of the velocity field. Okay, you can turn that off. You can turn on, you know, um, velocity vectors, and so on and so forth. So it's your choice what kind of results you want to visualize while the solution is progressing, okay? Now, um, you can click here to turn off the mesh display and you can bring it back later if you want. Now, you'll notice that the solution progression chart, um, you know, the, the software or the, the solver in discovery is intelligent and it automatically monitors multiple quantities, including this uh, pressure quantity that we're plotting. And once it feels that the solution has converged, it will automatically stop the solution. Now, please make sure you take a look at our in-depth tutorial to learn about, uh, you know, more advanced techniques on monitoring and controlling things like convergence, okay? Now, I am running this on a laptop with uh, six cores. So this solution is going to take uh, probably just another couple of minutes for me. You know, the solve time for you might be different depending on the specifications of your laptop. 
So why don't I pause this uh, recording and come back to you when the simulation is closer to being done. Okay, you can see now that the green progress uh, indicator is almost all the way around. You'll also notice that the uh, inlet static pressure that we're monitoring is flatline, meaning that it has reached a steady state uh, value. And now we're ready to do uh, you know, more in-depth post-processing and visualization of results. So first of all, let's get rid of this chart by clicking X. Okay, And uh, let's start taking a series of snapshots um, to save the scenes that we're interested in so we can easily come back to it later. So let's say we're interested in this view. This is streamlines from this angle. Click this button to save the current scene. Okay. Now let's turn off streamlines and let's go back to the uh, velocity. Okay. So let's say we're interested in this angle. This is showing you kind of a 3D rendering of velocity. Now let's click the save scene again to capture this one. Now let's change the variable of interest by clicking here. Let's change it from velocity to static pressure. And then let's click here to change the uh, display type from highest value to outer. Okay, you can see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see the blue zones indicate areas of low pressure. Maybe this is where there's recirculation going on and maybe you wanna put a, you know, a higher uh, radius over there. You know, many different options. Uh, by the way, you can uh, you know overlay the mesh on top of the results by clicking here. Okay, in this case, let's let's hide the mesh, and then let's click here to save this scene as well. Okay, now um, let's click on the triad here to view uh, the geometry from the plus x direction, and let's uh, turn off contours and let's turn on velocity vectors and let's change the variable back to velocity. Now, um, the contours are sized based on magnitude, but you can click here to make them constant size and reduce the size of the arrow. And this actually gives you a very clear indication of how that filter is behaving based on the inputs we provided in the porous media boundary condition. You can see very clearly that the flow in the middle is going straight up and down. That's because the porous, resist, porous media values that we provided, those coefficients, forces the flow to go in that direction because the resistance in the up and down direction is very low, whereas the resistance in the other two directions across the filter is very high. Okay, So this is just one example of how you would use porous media. And once again, I want to emphasize that the values for your specific filter may be different. So please consult with your in-house experts or with your friendly ANSYS technical support team. We're happy to help you. Okay, let's take a snapshot of this as well. Um, and then let's um, go back into kind of a 3D view here. And let's click on this object. This shows you a direction field. This is also another cool way to visualize what's going on. And just like with um, uh, you know the other views, you can change the orientation of this. Let's double click this green curved arrow to swap it 90 degrees. And you can see precisely what what the flow is doing okay so let's say we're interested in this view as well let's save this scene okay now you can display multiple result result types simultaneously so for example we can leave this on and we can also turn on velocity vectors you know just different cool ways of visualizing what's going on so let's say we're interested in this this view let's take another snapshot okay Okay, now we can also, for coolness purposes, visualize the solid geometry along with the fluid results. So to do that, let's turn on all those solid bodies that we previously had hidden, okay? Now, one cool way to visualize this is to actually turn these transparent. So let's click this face and control select this face and this one, and let's make these transparent by clicking on this icon down at the bottom left. Okay, and here you can see a very cool rendition or visualization of, of what's going on in this particular um, air intake filter. Okay, and let's save this scene as well. Now, if you're wondering what these save scenes do, if you click this arrow, 
you can see all the saved scenes that you have well saved. So you can just click to any of these to return back to that original save scene. So it really helps you by making it easy for you to go back to these scenes that you have created. Okay. And not only does it remember the, the result type that you have created, but it also remembers the visibility of bodies, as you can see in this scenario. Okay. So um, you can also click here to look at the values for those different monitors that we applied. So you can see this value shows you the average um, static pressure at the inlet. And this one shows you that velocity uh, uniformity index, the value is 0.7. So a value of one is perfect, a value of zero is very bad, 0.7 is probably okay. But uh, you know, if you change the design of this uh, system, maybe by repositioning this intake and rerunning the simulation, you can kind of see uh, how that changes the pressure drop and the uniformity, which is the whole purpose of simulation, okay? So uh, the last thing I wanna point out is you can generate a report automatically and you can do that by clicking here and going to create report. And you'll notice that it cycles through all those scenes that you created. And it will save all of this along with the uh, uh, you know, various values that you've applied for the physics inputs. And it saves it as an HTML file. So let's uh, wait for it to go through those different scenes. There you have it. And then it asks you where you want to save this. And let's save this in this location. So we'll just call it air intake with filter, but you can call it whatever you want. And it's an HTML file. And we'll click Save. OK. And then it launches your browser. And you can see you have this uh, geometry, which, by the way, you can rotate by using your middle mouse button. This is the geometry. And it shows you all the different simulation setup that you have along with all those images that you created. So a very nice way to create an automatic report. But of course, you can save these images individually and include them in your PowerPoint. And you can do that by uh, clicking here. And you can say export 2D image. And you can also export 3D image. Okay. So uh, with that, we conclude this Getting Started tutorial for an air intake system with a filter solved using ANSYS Discovery in refined mode with the Fluent Solver under the hood and utilizing the porous media physics functionality. We hope you enjoyed this. Like I said before, please make sure you look at the in-depth tutorials as well as all the other tutorials uh, we have in our archives. Thank you very much and enjoy using ANSYS Discovery.